Yo, what's going on, E7 fam? Pat here, back with another how to play guide. And in this one, we'll be talking about the girl who I swear looks like she should be part of the Bat family, Unbound Knight Arwell. If you've seen my how to play video guides before, you probably already know what to expect. But in case you don't, it's just basically going to be a super in depth breakdown of the character. We'll cover everything from stats to skills, some equipment builds for you to try out, and also some matchup knowledge for PvP. Without wasting any more time, Let's jump into Unbound Knight Arwell stats. Unbound Knight Arwell is a light knight of the Libra Zodiac symbol. She shares a stat line with Adventurer Roz. Taking a closer look at her stat line, she has 758 attack, 672 defense, 5,862 health, although this is misleading. It is actually 6,818 due to the health rune in her skill tree. 95 speed, 15% critical hit chance, 150% critical hit damage, no starting effect this, and it says here 12% starting effect resistance, but again, this is misleading. It is actually 47% effect resistance due to the fruition and earth runes in her skill tree. Overall, Unbound Knight Arwell has an excellent stat line for a tank in Epic 7, considering that she is a 3-star and a specialty change hero. The only stat you can really fault her on is her pretty terrible 95 base speed, but when you consider she is, as of the recording of this video, one of the game's premier mitigation knights, I think we can give that a pass. As a bit of trivia before moving on to the skill section, in the English dub of Epic 7, Arwell as well as Unbound Knight Arwell are voiced by the amazing Jeannie Tirado. You can also hear her as the voice of both versions of Rose, Nemunas, and of course, the fan favorite, Peira. She also voices other characters in various different anime and games, such as Norman from The Promised Neverland, Byleth, at least the female counterpart, from not only Fire Emblem Three Houses, but Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and my personal favorite, Android 21, from the Dragon Ball franchise. In the Japanese dub of Epic Seven, however, Arwell as well as Unbound Knight Arwell are voiced by Ruriko Aoki, you can hear her as Rina Tada in the Idol Master franchise, Air Groove in the Uma Musume franchise, and Sirius for those of you who are degenerate enough to play Azure Lane. I made it in the nick of time. Unbound Knight Arwell's S1 is Shield Thrust. We call it Shield Thrust despite the fact that she obviously attacks with a sword. <laughs> a true knight picks their battles wisely. Regardless, this is a single target attack with a 0.7x attack multiplier as well as a 5% max health multiplier. It has a 50-75% to chance, depending on skill level, to dispel one buff from the target. This effect is applied twice. There are two additional passives on Shield Thrust because of the runes that are in Unbound Knight Arwell's skill tree. The first of which is the Harvest Rune, which makes it so that Unbound Knight Arwell heals 5% of her maximum health upon use. Additionally, the speed rune gives 10% combat readiness when Arwell uses shield thrust. Overall, this is a pretty good S1 for a tank. Normally, you'd expect something like provoke or reverse provoke in this slot. Having a strip on the S1 is very nice and having some extra combat readiness and built-in healing allows you to get fancy and choose some different builds such as with the counter set that we'll be talking about in this build section later. Unbound Knight Arwell's signature skill is her passive skill here, Escort. It's the main reason I think she's probably one of the best mitigation knights in the entire game. At the start of battle and at the end of the caster's turn, grants Escort to Arwell for one turn. After an ally except for the caster is attacked by a single attack, increases the combat readiness of Arwell by 7 to 10% based on skill level. In case you forgot, Escort is a buff that says the bearer receives 30% of damage suffered by all allies in their place. When more than one damage distribution effect is granted, only the strongest effect is applied. Essentially, the character has a souped up version of Arius built into the kit, meaning that you don't actually need to put Arius on this character, especially since it doesn't actually stack with the Escort buff. That means that your Mitigation Knight can actually choose a slew of other really good Knight artifacts that other tanks in Epic 7 might not have access to, or might not want to forego Arius for, including things like Adamant Shield, 
Holy Sacrifice, and even Helag Lance. We'll talk more about the specifics on why you'd want one over the other in the character build section. Let's take a second to talk about a couple more runes in the kit for Arwell before we move on to her S3. The first of which is the Unity Rune. It increases the attack of all light allies by 10% giving Arwell a clearly defined identity other than just being a generically strong tank. We'll talk about some light allies you can pair her with in the matchup knowledge section. The guard rune grants a barrier equal to 15% of Arwell's max health to all light allies at the start of battle for two turns. Again, reinforcing the fact that she is a light knight that is meant to be paired with light allies. And finally, the glory rune, which says that if Arwell doesn't have a debuff at the start of her turn, she gets a one turn effectiveness buff which is super synergistic with the S3 that we'll talk about in a second. And it also further reinforces the fact that you want effect resistance on this character so that that way she doesn't get any debuffs and have her escort removed. Remember, escort is a buff that basically gives you a souped up version of Arius. If you lose that buff, then Arwell loses almost all of her value as a tank for your team. Unbound Knight Arwell's S3 is Judgment of Light. You acquire two souls upon use, and it has a four turn cooldown. It is a single target attack with a 0.7x attack multiplier, as well as a 15% max health multiplier. It dispels all buffs from a single target with a 75 to 100% chance based on skill level to stun that same target for one turn. It grants a barrier to all allies after use for two turns. The barrier strength is proportional to 20% of Unbound Knight Arwell's maximum health. Those who stray from the path of righteousness shall be punished. I made it in the nick of time. There are two other runes that we have to talk about here when it comes to Judgment of Light. The first of which is the Relic Rune, which increases the base damage of this move by 10% meaning it is slightly higher than the multipliers suggest that I talked about at the start of this skill. More importantly than that is the achievement rune. If Judgment of Light stuns a target, it decreases the skill cooldown of this move by one turn. Essentially, Judgment of Light is a three to four turn cooldown based on whether or not you actually land the stun. It's essentially a better version of Mediator Coeric's Balance of Power, which is already one of the strongest single target skills in Epic 7. Having your really strong Mitigation Knight have access to an on-demand strip and stun is a very powerful skill, and it's one of the reasons why Unbound Knight Arwell is one of the best knights in the game as of the recording of this video. Unbound Knight Arwell Soulburn changes the base chance on Shield Thrust to 100% chance for the cost of 10 souls. Essentially, it kind of guarantees, assuming that you're not resisted, that you're going to strip two buffs from a single target. Very useful for a knight to have. Not the best Soulburn, but in a pinch, it can get rid of things like immunity, speed buff, uh, get rid of attack buff, and sometimes these things can actually decide games. So I leave it to your discretion whether or not to use the move, but it is a fine soul burn nonetheless. Another trial to overcome. As for skill priority, Unbound Knight Arwell is a three star, meaning there is absolutely zero reason to not have this character at plus 15. About a year ago, we finally got Arwell's specialty change. And at the time, if you watch my impressions videos, I had a lot of amazing things to say about this character. I said things like this. A lot of damage. The fact that she's going to be able to have Arius and Adamant Shield, at least to me, says that Arwell might end up actually being the game's premier damage mitigation source. She might even be better than Fallen Cecilia is just from... And I also said things like this. Character, it should be fairly obvious throughout this video. Again, I'm super stoked about this character. I think this character is very good. And there is a strong, you can mark my words, there's a strong possibility that this character is going to be the meta tank. I, and it's not often I get to take a victory lap. I am thrilled to say here a year later that Arwell is the game's premier mitigation knight. A three star is the best mitigation knight in epic seven not a moonlight five star not a limited character not an rgb five star a three star that is an amazing amazing feeling and unless this character gets nerfed 
or we experience some kind of next level power creep, I think she will stay one of the most universally useful tanks for a while. And that is thanks to her built-in passive escort. It essentially doubles as the artifact Arius, but it doesn't take up her artifact slot. So because you have Arius and you have the flexibility to take another artifact, that is a massive boon to Arwell. I'm getting ahead of myself though. For those of you who are new and don't know, Arius is one of the most important artifacts in Epic 7. It is what lets tanks do their job on the battlefield and protect their allies. It is paramount for most of the game's difficult PvE content. It is incredibly useful in PvP as well. It's what defines the standard and tank down strategies. Because Arwell doesn't need to wear the Arius artifact, she can wear other artifacts in the knight class that usually don't have a home. Things like Adamant Shield to further give your team mitigation. She can wear Holy Sacrifice in order to increase her own longevity to stay alive longer as a tank. She can even play something like Helag Lance to be a more disruptive knight against aggressive strategies. This character is so cool in my opinion. And I think it's amazing again that she is a three star because that means every player has access to her. And when every player has access to such a strong tank in this game, content becomes easier and PVP in general becomes significantly more accessible. We are in the fifth year of Epic 7. And right now, Epic 7 is primarily a PVP focused game. Giving everyone a free top tier unit to start, that's going to make them feel significantly better about their experience in this game. And I personally think it should stay that way. It also helps that this character is incredibly easy to build. Taking a look at the character builds for Arwell, we are going to be on a speed set and a health offset for a standard build. Alternatives for four pieces to speed could be revenge if you so choose, but it is usually not the way that most players go. The vast majority of players in Epic 7 are on the speed set. Revenge is definitely something you can experiment with, and Mitigation Knights in general do have great synergy with the Revenge set. I just feel like players in general don't have strong Revenge gear compared to the speed gear that they have in their boxes, which is why they don't try to do that. Looking at alternatives for two-piece sets to health, you could choose Resist, which is obviously incredibly beneficial because you don't want to lose the Escort buff from Arwell. That's what allows her to do her job as a tank. So it's very, very important to have high effect resistance on this character. Resist set helps you do that. Defense gives you more bulk. Hit Chance is good if you are going to lean into the stun from Judgment of Light and you know lean into that effectiveness buff that she gets from her runes. And then Immunity is another option as well. For this build, and the one that I'm going to be talking about after this, I'm assuming you are on a triple S imprint for this character. Since she is a 3 star, it is only a matter of time before you get max copies of this from either the game's Covenant Summon or the game's Galaxy Summon. Taking a look at Arwell's desired stats, for attack I have 1374. This is Arwell's base attack, along with an I-90 weapon, as well as the recommended artifact, which is Adamant Shield. For defense, I have 1,500, and for health, I have 27k. These are the average values that I've found when looking around online, although I recognize 27k health is quite high compared to some of the tank stats that I see from players on my Discord and things like that. So if you can't get to 27k, try to shoot for at least 25k, 1,500 defense to start, and eventually work your way up to 27k. The tankiest ROLs have close to around 30,000 health. Taking a look at the speed here, I have 190. This is about 10 speed slower than the average ROL that I see uh, around the internet. Usually it's around 200 to 210 speed. I've decided to go for 190. I personally play 185 because you get the extra combat readiness in this character's kit. I don't think that you need to worry too much about the speed. So if you can only get to like 180 or 185 like me, I think that is more than fine. I think speed overall is the... Uh, lowest priority stat for this character outside of the obvious critical hit chance and critical hit damage, which we're going to have base values because this is not a damage dealer. Effectiveness, I have 0%.
but you could play like 50%, which when combined with the effectiveness buff in the kit should give you some reach against other characters. I wouldn't invest too heavily though into effectiveness. Like 100% is probably the absolute highest I would play on the character because at that point, you are massively impacting one of the stats on this actual character. For effect resistance, I have 150%. The average is usually around 130 to 140% looking around again the internet. But I think if you get debuffed on this character or you get escort stripped, that's really, really bad, which is why I've leaned into 150% uh, here on the spreadsheet. I personally play about 170% and that is the lowest I have ever played her on. I have in the past played her at around 190 to 200% effect resistance. I really, really do not want my escort buff taken away from me. And if you feel the same, then by all means, juice the effect resistance up and get it quite a bit higher. Taking a look at the right side pieces, necklace is going to be health percentage because we need a ton of health in order to be a tank. And then for ring here, I have health percentage again in order to help solidify that bulk. But you could go effect resistance if you are struggling to actually get to that 150% effect resistance mark like we talked about. Boots are speed, so we can take turns in a timely fashion. But if you have high speed on all of your pieces already and they're still really tanky, you could invest in health percentage boots if you so choose. For the artifact, I have Adamant Shield here because it is a four star and it in tandem with the escort uh, buff that Arwell receives from her passive makes her incredibly difficult to kill and also drastically reduces the incoming damage that is dealt to her teammates. It is just a really strong one-two punch if you're looking for just a simple, effective artifact that will make it so that your tank soaks up as much damage as possible, prevents as much damage as possible to your allies. Adamant Shield is the way to go. Holy Sacrifice is one that was incredibly popular during the Epic 7 2023 World Championship because a lot of good players focus down ROL because they don't want to accidentally give her extra combat readiness and they want to get her off the board as fast as possible because she is massively reducing the damage that they deal. So if that is something you notice is happening to you, consider Holy Sacrifice as it will give ROL essentially a second life assuming that it procs. This is a five star though, which is why it's not really the one that I want to recommend first and foremost. Finally, we have Helag Lance, which is another great four star option. It'll allow your ROL to take a ton of turns if your opponent doesn't focus fire her, which could be the key to winning in some aggressive or cleave matchups with the character. Again, a lot of great options on this character. It's not limited to just these three. Again, normally your tank is going to be on Arius most of the time. ROL doesn't need to be, so you can Feel free to experiment and try out all of the different artifacts that the Knight class has to offer. Looking at the per piece average, we have 15% defense, 21% health, 6 speed, and 17% effect resistance. The second build we're going to talk about in this video is another alternative you can choose for Arwell. Because Arwell has a strip on her S1 and gets back a decent chunk of her maximum HP whenever she uses that skill, Counter set is a viable option for this character. Essentially, every time you counter, you have the chance to get some pretty big value off the character. That's traditionally what you're looking for when you're trying to decide is a character worth playing on the counter set. When we take a look at the primary sets, obviously it's going to be counter set because that's the only way we can actually get counter attack on this character. And health is going to be the two piece offset. All of the alternative two piece sets are the same as the last build. Looking at the desired stats, you'll notice the, the spread is exactly the same except for the speed because we don't have the speed set. As you'll notice, it's only about 10 speed lower than where I benchmarked the speed set, which does mean that the per piece average on this is going to be a little bit higher. So if you don't have exactly the best gear, try to stick with the standard build first and foremost and then build your way up to this if you decide you want to go for a counter based on Bound Knight ROL. Taking a look at the right side, I'm on a health percentage necklace and ring is health percentage. But again, you could use ER in order to make up for possible ER you're missing on your piece in order to make sure the escort doesn't get stripped. Speed boots is recommended. Although if you, again, you have crazy high speed, you could go for health percentage or you could just go for a very slow uh, ROL with just giga health. If you want to really lean into that counter, that is an option for you. Speaking of options, Adamant Shield is again the recommended artifact. But feel free to try any number of options. Helag Lance will make up for any lost speed that you do have on the character. So that is something you could do. 
you can kind of go Helag Lance. Uh, if they don't focus you, you get a bunch of combat readiness. If they do focus you, you could potentially get a lot of counter procs and get some healing as well as some strips in the mix. I leave it to you to decide what you actually want to do with the character. Looking at the per piece average, the defense and health and ER are still the same at 15% defense, 21% health, and 17% effect resistance, but the speed is a little bit higher at 8 speed per piece average. As always, let's round out the video with some matchup knowledge. Because Unbound Knight Arwell gives increased attack to all light allies with the Unity Rune in her tree, and gives a barrier equal to 15% of her max health to all light allies thanks to the Guard Rune, naturally the game is telling you, you usually want to pair this character with light characters, although that's not always necessarily the case. Unbound Knight Arwell is so good in so many scenarios that she works with a huge portion of the cast. You can pick her with almost every single character. That said, having strong hard carries on your team, especially ones that are light based such as Lionheart Sermia, Navy Captain Landy, or even Savior Auden are great choices. She also synergizes amazingly well with really strong supports such as Conqueror Lilius or Mediator Kawarik. Conqueror Lilius, obviously one of the strongest characters in the game, as is Mediator Kawarik, who doubles as a cleanser, which is one of the biggest weaknesses that Arwell has. If she gets her escort buff stripped, you need to make sure that you can cleanse her and make sure she gets that escort back up so that she can do her job. Mediator does that fantastically. Having Judgment of Light and Balance of Power on the same team, by the way, when you have both Arwell and Mediator, is incredibly ridiculous because you could just strip all of your opponent's buffs on a very, very short uh, rotation. Super, super strong. And then finally, Angel of Light Angelica. Super top tier character. Incredibly annoying to play against. Just very good against a lot of characters in this game. Synergizes also super well with Arwell. Not only a light unit so that she gets that barrier. But when AOL is not attacked, she gets a combat radius push. You know who else gets a combat radius push when you don't attack her? Unbound Knight Arwell. Therefore, no matter what target your opponent decides to attack on your team, someone is going to be getting some amount of value. Moving on to bad matchups, the thing that Arwell doesn't want to see the most is any kind of character that can strip buffs and leave behind unbuffable, especially if that character has a soul burn that ignores effect resistance. Remember, if Arwell doesn't have escort buff, her value as a tank plummets, so you don't want to bring her into things like Angel of Light Angelica. Briar Witch Asaria, or a character like Nakwal, unless you have some kind of game plan. Since she is a tank, she's not particularly great against tank busters like Midnight Galililius, as well as things like Straze and Architect Laika, because you most likely are going to be taking the guard rune in this character's rune tree to get the barrier value. You're obviously going to be pretty weak against barrier punishing characters like Operator Segret, Desert Jewel Basar, Ning Ning, things like that. And then finally, I want to highlight here Ambitious Tywin. Arwell's pretty good against most of the meta-relevant knights as of the recording of this video because they don't really provide a lot of tempo and they don't really hinder Arwell's game plan. They can't stop her from controlling very specific characters uh, on the enemy's team. But Ambitious Tywin is one of the few that can and since he ignores effect resistance, no matter how much you build on Arwell, he could still potentially get a game-winning provoke on you and then obviously his S3 flash has the team-wide stun and team-wide defense break, which could potentially cause a loss for your team as well. So that's kind of why I wanted to highlight him here in this section. And finally, for good matchups, Arwell's matchups are pretty good, except for the ones I just talked about in the bow matchup section. Pretty much great against a large majority of the cast. There's a reason this is like a top three win rate character as of the recording of this video. She's good against a lot of stuff. But just to give you some examples, uh, tanks that don't really have a lot of tempo, like Yulha, pretty great there. Mediator Kawarik, she's pretty good against because you could hold his S3 Nature Restoration hostage. If he tries to give buffs to a teammate, you just slam Judgment of Light, undo the buffs on their hard carry. That's particularly pretty bad for them. Speaking of hard carries, Judgment of Light can stun lock things like Lone Crescent Bologna. You can get rid of Lionheart Sermia's buffs so that, that way when she tries to go for her I am the victor. Doesn't really have a ton of value. You just stun her. No buffs. She comes back around and it's going to hit like a wet noodle. Urban Shadow Shoe is another one that I want to highlight as well. Because you have barriers on Judgment of Light. That's pretty bad for Urban Shadow Shoe. She's not particularly great against barriers. She can't injure you if you constantly are putting up barriers on your team. And since you can stun her, again, that really does hamper her game plan. 
And lastly, I have Jacko Valentine here as kind of like a catch-all for most of the single-target cleave characters in the game. Arwell is the game's premier mitigation knight. She reduces quite a bit of damage on your entire team. And that's pretty bad for teams that are trying to wrap it up in a hurry. Very aggressive teams. She's definitely the go-to knight for a reason. And that's going to do it for how to play Unbound Knight Arwell. If I miss anything, let me know down in the comments below. If this video was of some help to you, you can help me out by remembering to like or subscribe to the channel and share the video with a friend or a guildmate if you think it'll help them out as well. If you want to see more how to play guides in the same style, there should be a playlist on your screen now. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye now.